This time it's part two of our collection of five of the biggest motorcycles in the world. There's an old American adage, there's no substitute for cubes. And by and large, I generally agree with this statement. Anybody that's tried to ride around in a 125 will understand just how hard work it is trying to get the bloody things to move at a reasonable pace. But there is a limit for most of us. But for some, the bigger the better. So let's embrace that all-American attitude of bigger is better. Here's five of the biggest capacity bikes available today. The Indian Thunderstroke 116. We've already seen Indian's 110 cubic inch motor as fitted to the Indian Chief in the last video. But in 2020 they decided that simply wasn't quite big enough so they went to 116. Although in reality near a 115 cubic inch engine. That's 890 cc's. The increase was achieved by increasing the bore of the engine slightly. But the 49 degree V-twin is a little bit more than just a big bore kit for the original engine because the 116 gets an all new cylinder heads and there's a 54mm throttle body too this being the first engine to be truly fly-by-wire in terms of its throttle control and management systems as usual with American motorcycle companies all the talk is about well talk because they seldom enjoy discussing out and out horsepower the main drive for this massive new motor is to fit it to the baggers and cruiser end of the market so it's seen on the Chieftain Dark Horse the Chieftain Limited, the Chieftain Elite and the Roadmaster. And if you like your machines a bit more sinister, there's the Roadmaster Dark Horse and the Springfield Dark Horse too. The Dark Horse model being the only one not to feature a large handlebar fairing. Of course it still has hard panniers on the side. So does the 116 engine offer some sort of leap forward from the older motor? Well, honestly I have no idea, but they do look bloody comfortable don't they? The Yamaha XV 1900. Yamaha has a long history of producing very good V twin metric cruisers, as Americans like to call them, and their principal range has been the XVs. With their little 535 motor being perhaps one of their best loved, this is a great all round bike and was for a time the best selling motorcycle in Germany. But at the larger end of the market, we found the XV 1900 Midnight Star. This bike first appeared in 2006. The XV, known as the Stratoliner in the United States, uses an 1854cc V twin engine with shaft final drive. Yamaha has a claim power figure of 115 brake horsepower, although actually it's around 90 at the back wheel. Although impressively, this peak power has reached at just 2,500 rpm. Predictably, the bike does weigh in at 329 kilos. Although well, handling does have a 735mm seat height, making life a little bit easier. And reasonable fuel economy, given the size of the engine, will see the 17 litre tank taking you out to about 150 miles. Which is handy because this big, lazy monster is certainly capable of carrying you some vast distances. Crossing continents should be no problem at all. The Honda VTX 1800. Rather like the earlier Honda Goldwings, the VTX was produced by Honda's factories in America, where it was built between 2001 and 2006. The engine is a 795cc V-twin with three valve heads and cunningly disguised water cooling. There's also shaft drive and a five-speed gearbox. In many ways the bike follows the same formula as most of the cruisers here in the video. It's around 320 kilos and of course there's a low seat height, or in this case it's very low at about 693mm. But also the bike has a fresh modern look, in stark contrast to its main competitors such as the Yamaha. Somewhat surprising for a bike of this size, the Honda does have a reputation as a great handler. It's said to have excellent balance and turns really well. Of course, you have to remember that ground clearance is limited. So why was the Honda not that successful? It wasn't on sale after all for very long. But the reality, as with many of these big bikes, 
is that the smaller 1300cc version offered very similar performance for a smaller outlay and smaller running costs. The Suzuki M1800 The M1800 Intruder was Suzuki's flagship V-twin cruiser when it was released in 2006. The machine used a 54 degree V-twin with direct overhead cams, 4 valves per cylinder and had a cubic capacity of 1783 cc's or 108.8 cubic inches. Like many of the Japanese cruisers it's a liquid cooled engine. But Suzuki don't really try to hide the radiator, instead turning it into something of a feature. The dimensions of the machine match almost exactly the fellow metric cruisers. That's 705 mil seat height and 321 kilos dry weight. 707 pounds incidentally. Although the fuel tank is handily a little bit larger at 19.5 litres, giving the bike a little bit more range compared to much of its Japanese opposition. In some territories the machine is marketed as the C109R Boulevard. But well, whatever Suzuki choose to call it, it's still the same 114 horsepower shaft drive monster truck of a V-twin. Suzuki claim 128 mile an hour top speed, which I dare say is quite possible. I'm just not too sure I'd want to hang on to a big cruiser at those kind of speeds. The phrase human parachute definitely springs to mind in this case. Like Honda, Suzuki went their own way in terms of styling, and there was more than the whiff of manga comic about this design. So definitely a good choice if you like your V-twins, but just want to be a bit different. Harley Davidson CVO 802. Okay, so let's be completely honest. There's no way you can make a video about massive V twin engines without Harley Davidson fitting in there somewhere. And all Harley Davidsons, even the small ones, feature rather large V-twin engines. However, none larger than those fitted to the CVOs. But as you might expect, Harley Davidson saved their biggest motors for their very biggest bikes. So you'll find the 802 motor nestled into a mighty machine such as the touring CVO Street Glide. As you might expect, the machine is epically comfortable and is capable of cruising huge miles. If you get bored, you've got the TFT screen to play with to keep you entertained. The latest version of the engine is 1977 cc's or 121 cubic inches. And to beat those pesky emission controls, it's got variable valve technology and liquid cooling to the heads. And so proud of Harley Davidson and the new motor, they even go so far as to quote a horsepower figure for the bike, something they rarely do. It's claimed 115 brake horsepower. So this bike is a mover, although do remember, Brow clearance, as on many cruiser Harleys, is a little bit limited. But these are Harleys' most premium big cruisers to date, so do expect to pay a premium price. So as with many such things, if you have to ask, you probably can't afford it. Do you have a suggestion for a bike or group of bikes we can do a story about? Perhaps you have a bike we can use for a test ride? Either way, drop us a line and let us know. If you enjoyed that video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course, thank you very much for watching.